Hello everyone, I'm Shreyas Kalantri. I am a Chief Fellow in Hematology and Oncology at University of Louisville Brown Cancer Center. I'm joined today by Dr. Hamza Hashmi. He's a myeloma expert at Memorial Sloan Catering Cancer Center. Uh, Dr. Hashmi, pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me here. We are at the Advancements in Oncology event by Ong Brothers and I have a few questions for Dr. Hashmi. Uh, so let's get started. So what specific strategies do you use uh, to make sure that the I don't want the newer uh, strategies like CAR T's are well communicated to community oncology doctors as you transition their care, care of the patients to them eventually. Thank you so much for the question. I think it's a very relevant question that as we are seeing that a lot of the cell therapy options, including bispecific antibodies and CAR T cell therapy, uh, is becoming in the more so in the frontline settings, early relapse settings. It's becoming even more important to have close collaboration with the community providers. And one of the things that we are doing is that, for some instance, if a patient has had CAR T-cell therapy, that once they have completed the first 30 days of observation and they're ready to go back to the community providers, we make sure there is a very nice handout given to the community providers regarding what other further care needs to be done. I do believe the CRS and ICANS, which are common toxicities after CAR T, they're manageable, they're transient, and they're essentially non-existent beyond 30 days. And I think what are more important are cytopenias, infections, hypogammaglobinomia that we see in these patients. And it's very important that for these patients, we actually prophylax them well for the infections with uh, antiviral therapies like uh, acyclovir or acyclovir for these patients for at least 12 months. We are doing PJP prophylaxis in these patients without a Bactrim or pentamidine or tovacone for at least six months. And finally, we do check the immunoglobulin levels for at least six months for after CAR-T in these patients and make sure if they are low in the levels and having infections, we give them IVIG prophylaxis. So it's very important to have all of these supportive care management done with help with our community providers. And the way we are doing that is by making sure that they are getting handouts from them, communication from us, whether it's a form of a note that is being sent back to the community provider, or it's a handout or a template or a protocol that we follow for all post car toxicity management profile, we, we do it. We also see these patients every three months or so after CAR-T and bispecific treatment just to make sure that the disease is in surveillance. We check their labs, we do some scans on these patients every now and then. And we make sure that all of these instructions and directions are being followed as patients go along. So you mentioned the highest risk of uh, CRS and ICANS being present in the first 30 days. Do you still continue to monitor them for those things beyond the 30-day period or you uh, stop monitoring them for those yeah. effects? In very rare circumstances, you'll be doing that by and large. The CRS and ICANS toxicity and neurotoxicity after CAR T is actually only limited the first 20 for 14 days. We don't really see that happen. But I do want to throw some caution in there that with CAR T cell therapy for myeloma, we have started noticing some non ICANS neurotoxicity like Parkinsonian features, Kirinner palsies, and we're also noticing an endogenous anterior colitis, which is CAR T associated, for which we actually do see these patients every three months or so. And we also do pass on some important information what are the signs of Parkinsonianism? What are the signs of inner palsies? And if the patients are having profuse watery diarrhea that persists beyond a certain time and have had infectious workup done, it's unremarkable. It's important to have them being evaluated at academic center to make sure there's no enterocolitis that is cardio associated, that we can actually help patients with some corticosteroids. Oh, excellent. Any key updates, some key takeaway points from today's panel that you would want to share with the uh, watchers, the viewers here? Yes, I do think that uh, it's a very robust conversation that we had today. Uh, regarding some of the bispecific antibodies moving the frontline settings, early relapse, first relapse perhaps. There's some very exciting data that is coming out at this meeting looking at combination of teclistimab and teletumumab that's shown profound efficacy. And I think it's only a matter of time before we will start using uh, options of cellular immunotherapy in the form of bispecific and CAR-T at first relapse. And a question would come up whether we do CAR-T for these patients or bispecific antibodies. In my own opinion, I think CAR-T being one and done, being a very profound efficacy, uh, not having as high a risk of infections and hypogamma, and having options for these patients at a time of their subsequent relapse in the form of uh, bispecific antibodies, perhaps a better option. So CAR-T, perhaps a better option for many of our patients. Having said that, I do think there's a subset of patients, maybe perhaps elderly, frail, who are at risk of neurotoxicity and Parkinsonian features, that perhaps combinations of deratumumab and teclistimab will perhaps be able to cure so many of these patients uh, with their myeloma. Oh, and you're looking forward to that data summing soon, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you for your time, Dr. Hashmi, and thank you, Ong Brothers, for this uh, event. And I'm, yeah. Thank you for having me here. Mm.